yes boys, how's it going? Got a cool 1v1 on Dawn of War 2 for you guys today, featuring Fathom as the mech boy. Oh, I know you guys love Fathom. It's a fan favourite. And a new kid on the block, at least as far as I know, and the block being my YouTube channel, but there you go. We got Chippawapa. Chippawapa. And I get some sort of deja vu when I say Chippawapa. I don't know why. But I'm going to call him Chippawapa Fiori. I don't know why either. I just feel like that's appropriate. So we've got Chippawapa Fiori, who's uh, going a pretty conventional build so far. Not showing any furious strategies. But we've got... Okay, yep. Fathom is deviating from standard procedure already, as is the Fathom standard. So he hasn't got any shooters, and he's fighting a Chaos Lord. And to be honest, the mech boy is doing a pretty decent job of getting rid of that HP on that fat fucker. But, um, yeah, I think it's going to be hard. Especially if this Chaos Lord gets the combi bolter, I think it's going to be quite tough to deal with him if you don't have any shooters. Now, maybe Fathom will be going for looters. I would hope that he does against Chaos Lord, but the problem with looters is they don't really do very good damage at long range. So if that Chaos Lord just goes in range stats with the combi bolter, that yeah, going to be really annoying to kill them. Anyway, we'll have to see what Fathom's plan is. I mean, you could go full melee against the Chaos Lord. In fact, to be honest, if you're going to get very little ranged, I think it would be better to go full melee. Because the Chaos Lord's interesting. He actually doesn't deal with melee very well. Like, the melee doesn't want to 1v1 him because of Kill the Weak and his fat hit. Brilliant. Brilliant. We'll be back. Alright, we'll resume from here, guys. I was just saying that the the Chaos Lord himself, he can 1v1 melee, but the problem is he's slow, and certainly by default he doesn't have a lot of range damage. So the melee basically just ignores him and wipes out all of his supporting troops, and he can't do much about it, because unlike a lot of other heroes, like the War Boss, who has Stomp, which could be used to protect your sluggers from enemy melee, Force Commander with Battle Cry, you can protect your attacks, etc. Man, Kill the Weak's not really very effective at that because it's such a small AoE. So, yeah, that's an option. However, it looks like we're going to see Lures, as I predicted. Okay. Now, what will be interesting is to see where Fathom takes it from here. Now, this could be a huge Kill the Weak if he gets right in the middle of all these boys. Does it a little bit early, to be honest, there? Chippawapa Fiori. So, he only knocks over a few of the Slugger boys. But, to be honest, it was fine. I mean, it's fully healed the Chaos Lord. He got him that win. So he dropped six heretics, and he killed three, three sluggers, so that definitely is worth it. Definitely is worth it. Great little trade there, and it healed up his Chaos Lord as well, who's now going to take that part of the map. Obviously, Fathom, ideally, I mean, obviously his troops weren't in position there, but ideally he would have had his looters there, and he would bait the enemy into coming at them. Especially once the Chaos Lord has used his kill the weak, then he becomes quite vulnerable to being rushed down in melee, especially because he's so slow. McBoy and CSM capping the side of the map here, having a little bit of a point trade, seemingly not wanting to engage with one another. I mean, the CSM will quite handily win that fight. You can easily batter the melee, the uh, McBoy in melee, but with heavy infantry armor and all the green cover around, they'll easily beat him in range too. So I'm kind of surprised they didn't back off and try and take him on. But we'll see, we'll see. Have I just got a sound book now? And I'm no longer offline as well. This is ridiculous. Okay, we'll be back again. First time lucky, guys. Here we go. Chaos Lord, AC Ticks moving in onto the Sluggers. Forcing them off because they're isolated. The Pain Boy arrives, but unfortunately, he comes with his heal a little bit too late. He's going to try and get stuck into some combat. He can definitely kill a couple of heretics, but he's not going to be able to force off an AC Tick squad and a Chaos Lord all on his own. So we'll see what happens here. See how many gens Fathom ends up losing. I mean, he's actually got the Slugger Boys. Oh, he's got double Sluggers coming back out now. So yeah, I guess the Pain Boy did his job here. He's just uh, stalling. Mm. Not even a single gen destroyed. Nice kill the weak there, hit all the models, caused a bit of disruption with the ticks, need to get out. Doesn't want to take this fight against double sluggers. Ooh, very nice special. That was quite lucky. Those sluggers could have killed a couple, well, 
No, they couldn't have killed one more. They'd have killed one more. There's only one heretic left. They wouldn't have been able to kill the Aspiring Champion. Do we see? Oh, we don't see her, her fully upgraded one yet, but yeah, we're going to see the tanky Halo build from the Chaos Lord. Given what Fathom has got, I really like this adaptability from Chippawapa Fiori. He has obviously seen that there is not a lot of ranged on the field. There is literally just the shitty shooter on the mech boy and then the looter as well. So this shield here, obviously it's got that 1 to 5 energy ratio. That is an effective 500 extra HP. But furthermore, he's got max 150 HP from this armor, 2.5 HP per second. And every time he hits in melee, as you'll probably see in a bit, he's going to regenerate a little bit of energy. So all in all, we're going to see a nice big kill the week here. Boom. Then he's going to get out of there. Yeah. I mean, he's literally fighting all of Fathom's army now by the mech boy, who's just been teleporting around capping, it would seem. He's going for the electric armor. Now, Chippewapa Fury has actually dropped to fourth gen. I like that. You never get more than four gens. So I assume he's wanting the fast tech here. The only risk there is right now, like this, this play is going to work great if he doesn't lose his gens. But I think Fathom is kind of aware. Obviously, the only upgrades that have come out so far are the AC ticks and these two war gears, which to be fair is quite a lot of upgrades for this amount of units. But there's no tier 1.5 units, right? Whereas Fathom has got two of them. Therefore, Fathom needs to be a little bit wary. Hmm, there might be something further coming out here. So yeah, Fathom's doing the full timing push against the gens. This slugger's taking a lot of HP damage. I would like to see the pain boy heal that slugger. You're gonna heal it? Oh wow. Chaos Lord and the CSM really focusing down the looters. But they do manage to get out just. And yeah, now these sluggers are kind of running rampant. And Fathom is actually going to tier 2 first. Wow. Here you go, guys. This is the power of going for such a small initial army. When your opponent doesn't punish it by actually getting the gem bash. Because yeah, think about it. Chippewapa Fury actually went for three units at the start. And they had a very aggressive, powerful early game leader in the Chaos Lord. Yet it was Fathom who initially put on the gen pressure. Now Fathom did see a lot of the map, and you see that reflected in the VPs. Been 100 VPs down and probably lost quite a lot of wreck. But he didn't bleed too badly with his boys. And just the simple fact that he only sp spent the, the money on two boys at the start, obviously he'd have a lot more requisition, reduce some costs. Furthermore, he would have had his population very low, underneath 30, so his upkeep would have been very low as well. So yeah, all in all, what that means is, it means that Fathom got his gens down sooner because he had the wreck to do so, and that in turn meant that he had more power income even though he was losing the map control. And even though Chippewapa Fury ended up building gens over here, so now you see that Chippewapa has lost a gen in his natural, so he's replaced it over here, and I don't think Fathom has realised. Now, a very important player for Fathom will be getting a slugger over here and wiping out this gen farm. Given that he is tier 2 now, and Chippewapa, I think, just got into tier 2 maybe? A bit strange, if Chippewapa just got to tier 2, I don't know why he's getting a heretic straight away. Get that later. That's not a priority purchase right now. The play right now for Fathom is get your, get your slugger knobs. Okay, he's got the slugger knobs. So now these guys with the burners, which give you extra HP, and then the knobs, which give all the boys extra HP. These guys are going to be so hard to kill. One of them goes and gen, gen bashes this because it's going to take Chippewapa's army to bloody force off one of these at the moment. And then the other one gets in the truck and goes and bashes this. And now you've put yourself in a very good position. Now it's not it's not like you're killing Space Marines. If you do that against Space Marines, Space Marines will be fucked, right? Because they're so power intensive. Chaos aren't that power intensive. They can beat you with Blood Letters and Plague Marines, which even combined is only 80 power. So it's not crazy power intensive compared to like Space Marines. But it will certainly help, and it means that basically the risk of Chaos ever getting multiple Dreadnoughts out is gone, or Chaos getting tier 3 is gone. So then if you can get to tier 3 and start getting knobs out, then you've got a win on, right? But uh, Fathom's been a little bit slow here. He's going to get this gem bash, but as you can see, what is around to deal with this? There's nothing. Just leave one of the sluggers here, put the pain boy and the other slugger in the truck, and go get the actual gem bash. Because he hasn't seen anything from tier 2 yet. I mean, at this point, he, he has been taking a while, so yeah, I was going to say, 
Personally, if I was in Fathom's spot, I would be expecting some Plague Marines any second. So we've, we've, we've showed our hand here, basically, you know, we, we showed our opponent that we got a war truck out. Oh, I don't like this from Fathom. Please, Fathom, don't do this. Don't get the blind tank buster. I mean, he, he cor correctly predicted that Chipper Weapon might have wanted to go for the Dreadnought before, but then, as soon as the War Truck was seen, Chipper Weapon swapped it for the Plague Marines. And if he goes Tank Busters, I mean, this is going to be a bad composition. Yeah, these guys are now useless. Like, I mean, they're not useless. They can Gem Bash well. Obviously, they're capping units. And they're also a deterrent, right? They're going to be useful if Chipper Weapon ever wants to get a Dreadnought. And a Dreadnought after Plague Marines here would be quite strong. Um, now that there's tank busters, I wouldn't go for the Dreadnought. I'd be going for Bloodletters if I was Chipper Whopper. We'll see what he goes for. Map control looking super dominant for Fathom. I mean, just look at his roster. He's got way more units and he's got more mobility because he's got this war truck. Not to mention the teleporting mech boy who's been very annoying. I haven't actually seen the electric armor go off yet. So I'm not, I'm not sure about that purchase, but really rare. Well, we now see Lightning Claws in the Chaos Lord. I think that could have waited as well. I mean, I don't know, look. that The Lightning Claws is great for his build because they attack really quick. So they proc the energy regen a lot faster than the Blood Mole would. So that in turn makes him really tanky. And this Chaos Lord right now could probably solo both of the upgraded Slugger Boys in his own. But the problem is... The Slugger Boys don't need to fight him. The Slugger Boys can just run past him, and he's so slow. He has no fire on the move damage, he doesn't even have a sidearm anymore. I just... yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't think it's going to go very well. Now this is an interesting instance. Whilst the Slugger Boys are trying to tie up the Plague Marines, which obviously they have to do to stop and shoot the War Truck, that gives opportunity for the Chaos Lord to get in some damage. But you see here, even when the Slugger Boys are messing around nearby to the Chaos Lord, they're not really getting that much damage. You're going to see the power of the Chaos Lord here with his fully upgrades. The Sluggers, yeah, they should not be taking this fight. This is really dumb. I don't know why the Aspiring Champion Heretics rotated around this way to try and end the fight. The Chaos Lord is soloing this just fine. I mean, the Sluggers are reinforcing off the truck, but that doesn't really matter. I actually go down here. I think he is. Oh no, the knob didn't attack. Only the boy did. They're going to get him. There's loads of pistol shots, but we know that pistol shots from Sluggers are absolutely shit. And he's, the thing is, he'd have died if he didn't have an armor, because the HP regen would be lower, but 2.5 HP regen, plus your natural 1 HP regen, a bit more because he's leveled up, saved his ass there, the Sluggers couldn't take him out. Alright, so that Aspiring Champion is coming out, he's lost his gens here, this is actually neutral, which is weird. The thing is, Fathom really doesn't even need it. He spent so much requisition, 400 on the weird boy and 300 on the busters. So, he's, he's just flying mad power right now. Yeah, I think that Lightning Claw upgrade could have waited a bit. It is, you know, it's strong, and obviously, without the reinforcements there, the Sluggers would have got wrecked. Even still, they lost loads of models, it gave a load of XP to the CL and other units, but... A good player's just not gonna fight him. They're just gonna run straight past and deal with all the rest of your army and force him off. So to spend 200 power and 50... Sorry, 200 requisition and 50 power on that? I don't know, man. I don't rate it. That said, there is gonna be some synergy with the Dreadnought. Because you can just send the Chaos Lord bomb rushing in to tie up tank busters when your dreadnought's in a big army versus army fight. Because he's so tanky with this build, it's going to be very difficult to force him off. We'll see though. I'm a little bit concerned for Chipper Wapper's power economy. It looks like he's going to actually cap this gen farm back. I don't know why Fathom didn't destroy it. Because he really didn't need the power. He's floating crazy power. 300 power. Fathom really didn't need the power. Wow, this is a horrible engagement for the KCSM. Yeah. Jesus. That knockback from the Weird Boy was brutal. Lucky to get out with two models, to be honest. Did lose the Aspiring Champion, unfortunately. But yeah, very, very, very untimely time to get knocked over by a Weird Boy. Horrible position. If they got knocked over here, well, they'd probably still retreated here. But maybe if they got knocked over here, they'd have gone this way and been safe. Having to run through two 
fully upgraded slugger boys. Not ideal. Ooh, Mechboy chooses to retreat and not teleport away. A slow reaction from Fathom and the Chaos Lord takes him out. That's a nice little snack because that's going to help Chipper Wapper get back into the map control. And he stole back these gen gens here. Again, huge mistake from Fathom. He just facilitated Chipper Wapper getting double gens again. And he, he didn't need the gens, so I don't know why he didn't destroy them. There was so much more value to be gained in denying Chipper Wapper the power than Fathom getting the power when he has 382. He's going for another tank buster. That's fair enough. I mean, he obviously wants to keep... Hang on. I was going to say he wants to keep the death gun. It looks like the looters died at some point. I don't even know when they died. Did they die over here when the KCSM charged them? Maybe. I'm not sure. Okay, here we go again. The curse is moving in. He's going to use kill the weak. Oh, instantly gets all that HP back. Now we can attack the slugger knobs. Now, what you want to do here... Ooh, a beautiful destructive strike from the Lightning Claws. That's the ability that they get. Wow, that did a lot of damage. Destructive strike. So it's kind of like Merciless Strike, basically, from the ASM. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. You line it up, and it does a line of AoE damage and knocks enemies over. Very high damage on those sluggers, though. They all need to spend some time healing in base now. What I was going to say with the Chaos Sword, when you take fights against sluggers or Banshees with the Exarch, you actually want to rotate the Chaos Lord by clicking on him and holding down the right click and then you just drag it in the direction of the slugger knob. And then you you um, you hit the S command and he will automatically fight the thing that's in front of him. So you rotate him to face the knob and then he will specifically fight the knob. Because as soon as you kill the knob, well for a start he's the one who outputs the vast majority of the damage. But you've got to remember that the knob leader on the slugger boys buffs all the other boys HP by like 10%. So instantly you take him out, you've removed the highest source of damage. Oh, this is very glitchy. And then you um, you reduce all the, the boys HP as well. Not to mention that costs way more to reinforce, right? It's not just a bit of wreck. You have to pay 25 power to replace that knob. Just a little trick to think about there. And you can use that with blood crushers and walkers as well. It's very effective. Okay, so we've got... Corn Marines here ambushing the mech. I hope the mech reacts in time. The Sluggers, I assumed, were going to tie up the Dreadnought so that it couldn't fire its auto cannon at the war truck. But the Dreadnought right now, yeah, it should be charging into melee with the tank busters to stop them firing. Now it can melee the war truck. But unfortunately, there are more tr um, tank busters. Okay, what the hell? The tank busters went into the truck. That was a mistake. They just need to finish off the Dreadnought. I don't know what's going on here. This is crazy. I guess they're looking at different things all over the place. So what happened down here? Okay, Chaos Lord was soloing those sluggers. So he beat them up pretty well. Oh, but the Plague Marine flank. With the double tank busters, I think there should be enough damage here. Yeah, you can't tie up both of them. But the vehicles are going to get traded. But obviously, the Dreadnought is way more expensive than a War Truck. So... Pretty interesting. Corn Marines did take out the Mech Boy. Ooh! Brutal tank buster retreat through Corn Berserkers and then some heretics. Unfortunately, there's only three heretics here, so I don't think they're going to be able to kill these tank busters. Yeah, very close. Down to one model. But the real problem here for Fathom is the VPs, especially when he keeps losing his Mech Boy. Poor Mech Boy preservation here from Fathom and also the electric armor. I've still not seen that go off yet. I know I miss things, but yeah. I don't think he's been getting much value out of it, so I don't think that was a very good purchase. You see, one of the things that I love about Battery Pack on the Mech Boy, not only is the heal great, but it actually just increases your maximum energy. So even if you don't use the heal very often, it's a nice upgrade because you get more energy to just teleport around the map a lot. Now the Electric Armor does give you plus 200 max HP, but clearly that's not helping Callum. Because 200 HP on the Mech Boy goes down very quickly, especially if you get caught by things like Berserkers. Nice warp vomit there. That is definitely one of the ways that you can deal with these tanky melee heroes. You stun them, and then their disruption and melee damage and the regen that they get every time they hit isn't coming into effect. But then the Death Dread came, and yeah, they do a lot of damage per hit, and obviously the Curse Lord. Even with these Lightning Claws, it's only power melee, so not very good against the Death Dread. Double Plague Marines now. I think Chipper Wappa realizes that he can win this on VPs. Fathom is only at 50 VPs. So this is going to be pretty tough for him to claw this victory back. This map's notoriously difficult when the enemy has higher VPs than you because all they need to do is send their whole army in one spot. In a lot of maps, you have to split it up. Like, imagine the VPs were, like, down here. 
super defensible, you'd never cap that VP right. So then you'd have to split up your army protecting, well, your VP here from decaps and this here. And then that gets tough. But the way Fedrid Folly is, with they're only this far apart, now you can just blob your army like in this area and protect both, both VPs quite easily. So, yeah, Heretics are attacking the Weird Boy, but they're not actually all hitting him because it's kind of blocked by the VP. And this Death Dread is not going to live. It's only got 650 HP because it does not have its burners and bits yet, and the Plague Marines are just going to take it out with a Missile Launcher. We do see a Khan Dreadnought, which is now moving into double tank busters, but unfortunately, no one has dealt with the Aspiring Champion Heretics. So they get into melee, they Doom Blast the tank busters, but the tank busters have already retreated. They know they're screwed at that point. Pain Boy nearly gets taken out by- Oh my god! Wow. Nice reaction there from Chipper Wapper, killing the Pain Boy in retreat. And Fathom just concedes like that. Oh my goodness, Fathom. Terrible. Yeah, I mean, he was kind of screwed, actually, wasn't he? There was no VPs, so that's the problem. So, a bit of learning to be had there, I think. I think one of the biggest mistakes Fathom made, actually, in this game was letting Chipper Wapper keep this gen farm. It, it blows my mind that he didn't destroy the gens. He decapped them, and then left it, and then later capped them. But why? For, like, all the game, Fathom didn't need the power. I mean, look at this, 600 power by the end of the game. Crazy. So, strategic mistakes made, for sure. I like seeing the KCSM. They actually did quite well. You see how Chipper Wapper just used them to cap the sidelines. Early on, they were the only ones going down this part of the map. And then they rotated to just hanging out here. It's nice because they're they're pretty good duelists. I don't actually know how KSM will do against Slugger Boys 1v1. I think it comes down to whether the KSM can trigger some decent specials. Obviously the Slugger Knob as well can trigger specials. I think it does come down to specials. But um, I think Sluggers probably win that more often than not. I'm not sure. Not sure. Anyway, that is the game. That is all for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed. Please leave a comment and a like if you did enjoy the video. That is all from me, Topid out.